So, folks, it's now come that time, as we do on every Friday, to uh, dig into the vault of the Sam Cedar life and career and do a segment we like to call uh, Sam Could Have Been Somebody. You want to set this up, Sammy? Uh, this show... This is spectacular, right? This is, uh, this is pretty amazing. This was a Castle Rock show for NBC. Castle Rock uh, invited me out to do a table read as a favor to them and in L.A. And uh, at the table read, John Goodman, Ryan Doyle Murray, Paula Marshall... Uh, me and some others, and uh, unbeknownst to me at the time, Warren Littlefield had told Castle Rock, I'll do the show if you get Sam Cedar. I was in New York, I didn't want to do the show, and so I made a tremendous amount of money because I kept saying no, and the way that people in L.A. deal with that is they go, oh, we get it. We get it. Yeah. Creative issues. Give them more money. <laughs> and frankly, um, I do have a price, and they far exceeded it. Um, but uh, fortunately, I didn't get back in time, and the, it just kept going up. This show is one of those shows where I thought there's either, this is going to be a great, interesting show, or there's no way in hell it would ever get on air, and it because uh, it's going to be so horrible. <laughs> and it was actually, uh, oddly enough, the latter. Uh, and um, here is the opening. I, I, you, you may, we may not have to show you anything after we show you this opening, but here's the opening. <laughs> Deep within the unconscious of every man, there exists a special place that regulates all that is male. It is raw. It is wild. And from the dawn of time, men have journeyed there to receive guidance and instruction on the art of being a man. Psychiatrists call this place the male psyche. Women call it the void between a man's ears. But I know it's... Oh my God, Sam! This is for NBC. Sam, I mean, with all due respect, Bill could do a, a better graphic in like forty-five minutes. But I got to be honest with you: just from the opening, whatever you say makes it worth it. However much money and however you didn't sell out and whatever compromises you made in order to support your art, that was pretty low. Well, they didn't show me that before we did the show. I, they, but, they, but see, but that's the, the risk you take. And I'm yeah, not, I mean, look, you know what? Nobody saw it. The only time anybody's going to see it is now, and it's where it's good programming. Oh, God. Scattered pictures. All right, now, wait a second. That's highly inappropriate. That's highly inappropriate. No, it's terrific. But, okay. Go ahead. Now, now, understand what you're about to see. Now, Jack Palance was supposed to be the guy in Guy Island who was supposed to read that uh, voiceover. It turned out to be Joe Don Baker. And the, in the very definition of mailing it in. Uh, but even the director, <laughs> like, there's no way to tell. Like, what happens is, you'll see, when I have a quandary, I go to Guy Island. Uh, now, now Guy Island is like the id of the guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. listen. Right. This is like Herman's head. Right? Right. Herman's head. Right. That was, was that. Was it taken off of that? Was that popular at the time? Yeah, I, I think so. But look, I want to warn you. If you're at work, this next clip is arguably work safe. In fact, it may not be safe for anyone to see what you're about to see. Uh, and it's certainly something that I probably will regret uh, putting online. But um, here is uh, one of the first scenes of Guy Island. Tracy, have you seen my underwear? All my boxes are gone. You're vanished. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't I tell you? I threw them away. <laughs> you threw them away? Yeah, uh, all of them? E e even the ones with the little NFL helmets? <laughs> Come on, Doug. They were all so threadbare and baggy. Every time he got into bed, I felt like I was sleeping with Gandhi. But I love my little helmets. Doug, don't panic. Look in the other drawer. I got you a little surprise. Oh, yeah? <laughs> don't you just love them? Oh, come on. You I gotta be kidding. It's him, the grand guy. Got a pair of those in pink, sweetheart? <laughs> I can't wear these. Oh, my God, Sam. Sam. I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. <laughs> 
I, I don't know what to say either, folks. Um, how many how many takes did they have to do when you stand in those ridiculous underwear? Well, the worst part about it is that I was heavily medicated at the time. I mean, severely medicated. What? Um, why? Because in this next scene, it's this scene, right, Bill? You will see Warren Littlefield came down. And the head I, of, he was the CEO of NBC at the time? Yeah, he was the head of, like, NBC Entertainment. And, you know, he, well, we actually got you know, somewhat friendly because I had extraordinary access to the casting process of uh -huh. this because of the, the whole way this went down. Because he kept denying them? Yeah, basically. Yeah. And so he called me over one day and he goes, uh, Sam, listen, watching what you do with physical comedy, I want to put a little more in here because you're great with it. And I was like, uh, okay, whatever. And so they had me doing all sorts of different stuff but didn't bring down a stunt person to save money. Now, the, the scene shows me doing a flip that's not terribly, uh, or, or, you know, sophisticated, but when I had done that in rehearsal or pre-tape, at one point I missed where I was supposed to land and I landed on my shoulder. And you can actually see it today. I have a second degree separation of my shoulder. Still? Still. So you paid the price for Guy Island. And it was incredibly painful. Your artistic compromise has crippled you somehow. And I was on, I don't know what it was, Vicodin or Percocet throughout this entire process. So I was like heavily sedated <laughs> when we were doing the show. Uh, but here is that scene now. Monday's boxers, Tuesday's boxers. We are looking at a new starting lineup. <laughs> All right, boys, sorry. It's time for the night shift. <laughs> oh, no, she's home. <laughs> oh, no. Honey, uh, no need to come up. Oh, great. Now I look like Tarzan wearing Depends. Doug, what are you doing up there? Here I come. Oh, my God, Doug! Oh, you're wearing your new underwear. Wait, wait. So you, so you were high when you tumbled down the stairs? Well, I didn't. I didn't do the stairs. That was a that was a stunt guy. But the stuff upstairs, flipping I, on was, the bed. It, yeah, it was far more sophisticated. Until I almost couldn't you have sued? Yes, that's the worst part about it. Is like my manager was an executive producer of the show because that's what your manager does yeah. when you're getting offered everything. And it was amazing to watch how all these people just sort of drifted away. At that point, like nobody said a word. Like, nobody, like, my marriage... Because like, you were like, ah, oh, No, no, I'm saying, like, throughout the whole process. Like, I'm like, my shoulder is out of whack. I, it screwed me up for months. And my manager never, ever spoke of it because I think he and my attorney, they were all afraid that you I was going to go us. work. There was, there's no stunt people there. Right. And to this day, I have this second degree uh, Maybe separation. you could sue now. Why don't you sue now? I, I, I bet you the statute of limitations is up.